Docker is being removed from Kubernetes. Are you screwed now? What happens to your existing workload? And how do you plan on switching to a new container runtime? For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Raj. I'm a senior solutions architect at AWS, best-selling Udemy and Pluralsight author. And previously, I was a distinguished cloud architect at Verizon. All right, let's get started. Let's start with the announcement that just came out. So currently for Amazon EKS or Elastic Kubernetes Service, the latest version is Kubernetes version 1.23, where Docker runtime is the default runtime and you have the option to switch to another runtime called ContainerD. And the same options exist from Kubernetes version 1.21. Now for Kubernetes version 1.24, which is to be released, Docker runtime is removed. Container D is the only runtime. So obviously the question is, are you screwed? So this is something that you probably did not know. If currently you are running Amazon EKS and you are using Bottle Rocket AMI, Container D is already the container runtime. There is no Docker in Bottle Rocket AMI. Similarly, if you are running Fargate, Container D is the container runtime. All your container images that you created, even with Dockerfile, will run seamlessly. Dockerfile has no dependency whatsoever on the Docker runtime that's running in your Kubernetes cluster. Because all the container images that you create are OCI or Open Container Initiative compliant, and oversimplifying a little bit, all container runtime does is create your container and runs it. So any container images which is OCI compliant should be able to create it and run in any container runtime, including container D. So in summary, your existing containers that are running today in your Kubernetes clusters will run fine, except a couple of things you need to keep in mind. So what should you do? You need to change your Docker file or the container image only if you are using Docker in Docker, which is not recommended for security reasons, or you are using Docker sockets. So most of the cases, you are probably not using these two things. But regardless, even if you are not using Docker in Docker or Docker sockets, you should switch to container D in version 1.23, that's the current Kubernetes version, and test out. And I'm gonna go over how you can switch from Docker runtime to container runtime in a Kubernetes cluster. Also, you have one year to switch to version 1.24. So you have plenty of time before 1.24 becomes the standard version and Docker runtime is completely removed. Another change that will come is, since Docker runtime is removed, you will not be able to run any Docker commands such as Docker exec or Docker log, etc. But there is no problem there. You can switch to equivalent kubectl commands like kubectl exec, kubectl logs, etc. So how do you switch to container D in Kubernetes version 1.21 to 1.23? So if you are running EKS optimized Amazon Linux 2, which is the most popular option, it contains an optional bootstrap flag. So you can set this flag and the runtime will switch from Docker to container D. And you should add a node group in your existing cluster with container D to test, or you can create a new cluster with just container D runtime. But you can have two different node groups, one running with Docker runtime and another running with container D runtime at the same time, if you want to test out the same software in the same cluster. Now, what are some ways to switch so EKSCTL makes it really easy to switch to container D runtime. So I'm gonna go over a demo with EKSCTL. But if you are not using EKSCTL, if you are using a launch template uh, for your EKS node group, you can specify a specific flag in user data in launch template. Uh, so launch template, basically you say, this is the AMI you want to use as well as any optional user data but it has a little caveat, I'm gonna go over it. And of course, Terraform is the most popular infrastructure as code. 
Uh, you can use Terraform to switch container runtime. I'll show you a little code snippet for that as well. Also remember that uh, anytime you use user data or bootstrap script that you create or change, along with EKS optimized AMI that results in a custom AMI for now, because you are testing it out in version 1.21 to 1.23, and from Kubernetes version 1.24, AWS is gonna give you the EKS optimized Amazon Linux 2 AMI where container D is the container runtime. All right, so let's go over the launch template caveat and a Terraform snippet, and then we'll do the EKS CTL demo. So this is a sample launch template user data. So it needs to adhere to this MIME version. So in the user data, you install whatever software you need. So in this case, for example, you are doing yum install Amazon SSM agent and a couple of other things. Now the bottom portion has two parts. EKS bootstrap data. In EKS bootstrap data, this portion says that switch the container runtime to container D. So you could see that EKS cluster with new VPC, use max pod false dash dash container dash runtime space container D. So it is switching the container runtime from whatever is default, which is Docker runtime to container D. But the caveat or the tricky part is this cryptic looking thing. So this one you need. So this is standard. This is not just some weird stuff that's just one time. Uh, so if you put user data in your launch template, you always have to copy paste this specific cryptic paragraph. It's because of that MIME version. Uh, if you want to read more, I have given a link to this blog. You can go, you can copy paste this b64 underscore cluster underscore ca thing. Uh, and then on the bottom, you can do the bootstrapped dot sh. So basically you are setting the container flag. So if you just do the bottom part without this cryptic paragraph, it will not work with launch template. So if you're using Terraform, I assume most of you are, Terraform does that cryptic paragraph part for you. You don't need to specify it here. So this is a sample Terraform and you could see all we are passing is bootstrap extra args equal to dash dash container runtime space container D. That's it. And when the Terraform creates the node group or the cluster, it will add this part and you don't need to do anything. All right, now that we saw how user data in launch template can switch container runtime as well as with Terraform, uh, let's do a simple demo with EKS CTL, which is definitely the easier option. I have this EKS cluster running in this USOS2. If I run kubectl get nodes, it shows the container runtime as Docker. So I have two EC2 instances running, both are running with container runtime Docker. So I'm going to use EKS CTL. So I'm going to create another unmanaged node group with container runtime container D. You can also run manage node. You just copy paste this thing. But for now, I'm just going to do this unmanaged node. So I'm going to copy this to clipboard and save it as container D.yaml. So in the name of the cluster, I just need to copy the actual cluster name and then put it here. Save this file. So I'm just going to run ekstl create node group dash dash config file equal to container d dot yaml. So this should go create the node group with the two m5 large, but the container runtime should be container d. All right, so the new node group has been created. Let's check it out. So I'm going to run ekstl get node group for this cluster. So it should give me the two node groups. So we have ng dash 54 c which was created with the cluster by default. And the AMI is Amazon Linux 2. And this ng1 we just created for M5 large to M5 larges. But see the AMI is not Amazon AL2 anymore. Because as soon as we changed the runtime, it became a custom AMI. Now if we run kubectl get nodes dash o wide, it should show the container runtime. There you go, these are the two new EC2s. Uh, so they are running container D. I'm going to link for all this documentation that I went over 
such as you can CTL unmanaged, uh, managed, user data with launch template, as well as some, some of the other blogs in the description. So check it out if interested. And if you've been following this demo along with me, make sure to delete the cluster because M5 large could be expensive if you let it running. So I'm just going to run EKSCTL delete cluster with the name and that should go delete the cluster. If you found this video helpful, please click that like button, subscribe to my channel. Also put any questions in the comment. Each like, subscribe, comment help this channel grow. Also check out my highest rated and best selling Udemy courses that covers Kubernetes end to end, system design, Git GitHub, DevOps, etc. That's a great way to support me and this channel. All the links in the description. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.